Okay, so I'm removing my tachometer and the clock from the smart car. Uh, if yours is one that didn't come with a tachometer or someone took it off before you got the car, uh, I figured I'd make a video that shows where it plugs in. Because uh, there is a wire on there that uh, you may be wondering where it goes. So, to take your tachometer out and put it in, there will be a couple of screws holding it in. Just a couple of screws here. You know, that screw right into the right into the dash, and then once you take the screws out, you can slide your tachometer out, and your wire is rooted in behind the dash there, and it comes up in behind your uh, instrument panel. And uh, the instrument panel is held in by one. two, three, four screws. Uh, if you do one side there, uh, you might miss the other one and wonder why it's not pulling up. Uh, but if you take all four out, uh, the instrument panel comes up, comes up pretty easily and then you can get behind it. And then once you get your instrument panel out, oh, get it to stay. And then you get behind it, your tachometer goes right in there where that uh, slot is. So right there is where your tachometer wires into. And then there'll be a single wire off the tachometer. Uh, depending on where you are, it could have this single wire or it could have uh, the slot. There's actually a pin in there for the... It, uh, does the same uh, job as this single wire here. Some of them are wired right into the back of the uh, dash pod. Some of them are have that one wire going into here. Uh, I think it's just a ground or a power, either ground or power. I didn't put the meter on it. Uh, I'll put a uh, I'll put up a picture when I do the video of uh, which slot the wire goes into. So you can always put a pin in the connector. I forgot I was playing around with this connector. So uh, when it goes into the back of the gauge pod, it's uh, like that with the tab up. If you look on the the tab upside, you see all the pins in there. So if you count from the right side over, so one, two, three, four, and then that's uh, the same connection as this wire is uh, under the gauge pod here. So if the gauge you have doesn't have a doesn't have that wire on it, doesn't have this single wire, then uh, that's the pin it needs to be plugged into there. So. so from the right side, one, two, three, four. From the left side, one, two, three, four, five, six. So here's the connector. It just plugs into the back of the dash pod there. And then there's the, the single wire that came with it. And that just ties into this blue one here. So that, that little blue one, it might be bundled up with the rest of the wires there. They might have to untape it and then, and then uh, put it together with the single one there. Uh, I've seen them with, uh, uh, it's got like a, a splice from Mercedes on it. So you see a little red, a little red dab of glue on there and then some tape around it. Uh, it's all all that is is a splice. It's not a resistor or anything like that So so yeah, you just got to find that little wire blue wire and if yours has the single wire like this one came with uh, Then that's where that goes. I'm not sure why they uh, Went with wiring that wire into the dash here or into the uh, I don't know with the rest of the wires here could it could be something to do with over time Maybe it got weak and then uh, started uh, shorting something out. I don't know but uh, there is two configurations so if you have a spare wire then it's here and if you wanted to wire it into that one then you have to get a, a small enough pin that'll work for that uh, connector so uh, if you're taking your tachometer off you got to root that back out there you know just pull it through and try to get it not to snag and then get it out uh, for your clock if you're moving the clock or putting a clock in the clock is very simple. Same, same, uh, it goes in the same way. Just, 
just held in by uh, two or three screws there. And then the clock just plugs into the side of your uh, uh, set of switches on the top here. Uh, and all it is is uh, power for the lights and power for the clock. Yeah, just a ground and two powers going into it. So one is for the dash lights and then one is for the power for the clock. But I'm taking them both out. For a while there, there was a couple smart cars at the wreckers, but now it's pretty rare. And uh, I went to the wrecker and I found this tack and it was broken. So I repaired the mount, I got the plastic welder out and I welded the mount back together. And then I went and plugged the tack in and the tack isn't working and I don't uh, want to take it apart to see what's going on with it. I think what happened is some uh, some uh, uh, hooligan went in there and just hit it with his wrench and broke it off and now it no longer works. So, uh, so I'm taking the tack out, I'm taking the clock out uh, because I need a... Uh, mount. I'm gonna mount uh, my uh, wireless charger here like that, so I can uh, just put my phone in place and use it for uh, use it for uh, when I'm traveling and uh, you know uh, use the map feature on it. And uh, to replace the clock and to replace the the tachometer, I just got one of these little gauge pods. Uh, this one was about forty dollars. It uh, only comes on when the alternator kicks on. It uh, That's how it turns on and off. It turns on and off with uh, battery voltage. So when the battery voltage gets uh, above 12.7 uh, volts, then it comes on. Uh, and then it kicks off when it's lower than 12.7 volts. So yeah, the car starts up and the alternator starts up and then it, then the gauge comes on. And then there's my uh, there's my RPMs. Uh, uh, there's my uh, the time. So that's what time it is now. It's 12:39 a.m. Uh, my speed, uh, the distance I traveled, uh, the time I traveled, uh, kilometers per liter. Uh, here in Canada, we go by uh, liters per hundred kilometers, so kilometers per liter. So if you're getting 100 kilometers per liter, you're getting uh, five liters per hundred kilometers. So you gotta do a little bit of math to make it work. So that's about what the car's been getting, but uh, who knows if the gauge, how accurate it is, because uh, the smart car doesn't have a whole lot of sensors. Uh, and you have to go through it and uh, uh, set how many cylinders and the CC of the engine and all that other stuff. So, uh, but that this could, gauge could be for gas and diesel is a little different. I don't know, uh, but it has a whole whack of different settings on it. You know, you could brake test. I don't like how it has the speedometer right in the center. I was hoping for one that just had the tachometer, but it works. And there's battery voltage, GPS signal, direction north. You know, so there's lots of different sensors. It doesn't have a. I was trying to get the temperature to work on here. You got to actually go to. So all smart cars have the the temperature for the dash, you know where it has you know it tells you the the ambient temperature outside. All of them have the th thermometer on it, but uh, you got to go to Mercedes and say, hey, I want you to turn the the uh, temperature sensor uh, on on my car, and then they'll turn it on, and then uh, you'll get the whatever temperature it is outside for like seventy dollars or. Or probably more whatever they charge you know they, they couldn't just give it to you from the factory with it working they have the thermometer on it it's just programmed not to take the data from the thermometer and give you the reading on the outside they got to actually put it into their star system and uh, turn it on you know and, th and then you get the uh, temperature data on the on the dash so it's kind of silly 
but I don't know, maybe it's a, a way of uh, making money off the smart cars. You have to buy all these little options. So that could be uh, one of the reasons why the tachometer doesn't work too. When I got this car, it didn't have a tack or a clock on it. So maybe you got to go to Mercedes and get them to turn the tack on too. I don't know. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll try it in the other car because the other car has a tack on it. So anyway, yeah, that's the, the little gauge pod. So And that allows me to eliminate uh, both gauges on there. And uh, to buy those gauges, even on eBay, they're like, I don't know, like $60, $70 or more for the gauges. And for the little gauge pod here that cost me like $40, uh, I think it's a good investment. You know, and it, it gives me more data. Like if I'm uh, doing a run somewhere, uh, it'll tell me how long I've been driving for. It'll tell me the distance. Uh, yeah, so that, that's pretty cool. You know, if you're if you're strictly for business, you just write down the number right there. So that's that's pretty neat. And it gives you a, a map sensor data, but I, I don't know. I don't know what the 90 means. You know, but. step on it you can see it moving uh, going down the road it goes to like 120 I don't know maybe uh, it just is taking uh, extra extrapolating data from a, a bunch of variables and it's giving that 90 maybe it has a baseline at 100 and 90 is like at a vacuum and then above 100 is uh, positive pressure I don't know so I, I don't know what the 90 means for the map sensor uh, I got my uh, I want the RPM over there, and I want uh, uh, liters per hundred liters per kilometers on the other side. So it's pretty cool. I, I just played with it a little bit, but it definitely beats the the two big eyeballs on the dash. There we go. And I got a map on that side. Air fuel. Is that ratio? Okay, so more turbo, it should get leaner. Okay, now which way did I... Oh, good, I did it right. thought I was going to run it the other way. There we go. So I got my mileage indicator there, I got my RPMs, my uh, uh, time traveling, uh, the distance traveled, the speed I'm traveling, and the current time. So everything all in this one little gauge and it sticks right on the dash. And one other thing I forgot to show about this little pod that's cool is uh, you can uh, clear codes and read codes. Uh, I just got to remember where it is now. Oh, right there. So, I think how you do this. I uh, press it and hold it. There we go. And you can got to turn the key on. Scan DTCs, no DTCs, and then you can clear codes, clean DTCs. Uh, you can do a data stream, that's what it was at. So it's a pretty cool little gauge, but smart doesn't have a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of sensor data on there and for some reason should have something what's going on here oh maybe because I didn't have the key uh, on <laughs> oh, 
Okay, oh, there we go. I got battery voltage uh, distance since the uh, odometer was, since this uh, unit's been reading it. 162 kilometers, trip distance, drive time. That is LHK. Anyway, so not a lot of freeze frame data. Smart doesn't have a lot of sensors. But anyway. Ah. There we go. And for some reason it's not reading RPM. It does that sometimes, I don't know why. But if I disconnect it and reconnect it. Okay, disconnected, no power. And reconnect it, or when it shuts down on its own. Connect and it'll have all the data on there again. So I don't know why it does that. It just does it occasionally. And then there's my RPMs. So uh, it's a very good little gauge but it has a, a little bit of the Chinese bugs when you buy some Chinese stuff sometimes uh, it works and a lot of it is useful things but sometimes they got little bugs in it so uh, that's kind of a little bug but it hadn't done that for like three four days so you know it uh, it's still you know it's good and it's only the rpm that cuts out so maybe it's something wrong with the car too I don't know, I gotta, I gotta check. It could be reason why the tack isn't working. Maybe the uh, crank position sensor is not working properly, but I, I can't see how it would quit and then it, you shut it off and it's working again. So I don't know. I think it's just the, the gauge itself. Just for whatever reason, it stops working, so. So I'm gonna get rid of my uh, tack, get rid of the clock and then uh, mount my phone here with the uh, whatever you call it the, the charging pad and just stick my phone there take it out stick my phone there so yeah that's how you uh, take the gauge off or put the gauge on the tack and the 